Welcome back to Sip the Talent Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at the four main stories that have came across my desk in the past 24 hours. And once we get to the weekend is where we kind of transition from film study into things that are in the news leading up to the next week. So on Friday, Saturday, maybe even Sunday morning, I'm going to try to give some insight on things that come across my desk or that I see on my feed and whatnot and just give my commentary on. But the four things that struck my eyes for today. Today is Friday... December 29th is 10.30 a.m. as I'm recording this. The first thing that came out to me is Roquan talking about how the how fast, and not only Roquan, but Roquan and Mike McDonald talking about how fast the Miami Dolphins were on the field. It's like they're a track team playing um, football. For some reference, I want to give you that don't know, I know most of you do know the 40 times of the main skill guys of the Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, the cheetah. 429. Jalen Waddle out of, out of Alabama. 437. Robbie Chosen, who used to be Robbie Anderson. 436. Raheem Moser, who has 21 touchdowns this year. 438. And the rookie, A Chain from Texas AM. 432. That's a lot, a lot of speed to have to deal with. So you're going to have to be fundamentally sound, whether you play man or zone. You got to communicate. You got to make sure that no blown coverages happen because any blown coverages could result, or not even blown coverages, blown assignments, maybe in your run fits, could result in a touchdown. Second thing that came across my, my eyes is an article about Mike McDonald and how he hides what he does pre-snap and post-snap. And the article comes from the Baltimore Banner. The article comes from the Baltimore Banner. And they talked about how the Ravens' defense lies to quarterbacks. Now, there's one quote in this article that I really want to hit on and then kind of talk about what I've talked about. It says, the number one thing that Baltimore does so well is that they're going to change the picture post-snap every single play. And that's from ESPN analyst Matt Bowen. Now, I talked about this on my channel and on the channel with um, Eric Crocker, how every time... The Ravens line up defensively. You can't. Your pre-snap read has to go out the window. You can think, but maybe it can be pre-snap. But a lot of times it's something different. And an example I gave on one of the videos this week was we had everybody in the line of scrimmage. We had seven guys at the line of scrimmage. And it looked like blitz zero. But post-snap, it turned into three deep, three under. But it looked like blitz zero. So you never know what you're going to get post snap from Mike McDonald and he's done a great job of holding the guys accountable making sure that they know what they're supposed to do making sure they know what everybody else is supposed to do so they can hold each other accountable third thing on speak with George Taylor uh, with George Taylor, James Jones Acho and Shady McCoy they did a thing about who has the edge and it was either um, see James had the Ravens Joy had uh, the Dolphins and they had head coaches. <laughs> um, Joy picked Mike McDonald, McDaniel. James picked John Harbaugh. They had quarterbacks. Both picked Lamar Jackson. They had offense. Joy picked the Dolphins. You know, they number one ranked offense. Yards and touchdowns and all that stuff. They're high-powered offense. James picked the Ravens. Defense. Both picked the Ravens. And then X-Factor. Joy picked Cedric Wilson because of Tyreek being hurt. Jalen Waddle may not be able, to be able to play, and Wilson has been kind of the guy that's got been filling in that role for the, those injured guys. Um, James picked Mike McDonald, surprisingly. And I would have thought he would have said Lamar, but I agree with him. Mike McDonald is the X Factor because of what McDonald, what happened the last time McDonald faced the Dolphins. We literally got embarrassed that second half. And, you know, again, I still attribute that to McDonald being a rookie, Kyle Hamilton being a rookie, and they still trying to learn all the things they need to do in the off the defense. And the Dolphins kind of embarrassed us. So this will be a get-back game for Mike McDonald to see if he's learned from that and, and gotten better and can, can slow down that track team that they have over there. And then the injury report. The last thing is the injury report that I saw Thursday, which is kind of promising, and I'll kind of tell you what I saw. From the Ravens side, Jay Loma Davis did not practice with a concussion. That's nothing new. Zay Flowers didn't practice, but I think it's precautionary. 
Kyle Hamilton was limited in practice. That's good to see being that he ended the game sitting on the bench with ice on his knee. Uh, Arthur Millette was limited. McCarr was limited with a concussion, which I didn't know anything about. Uh, Pat Queen with a shoulder was a full participant, and he always participates, you know, no matter how banged up he is. Roquan was a full participant with the pectoral issue. Jordan Stout was limited. That's our punter. Broderick, Broderick Washington was back, uh, was full participant. Zeitler was limited with a knee and a quad. And there, Sean Phillips did not practice with the shoulder. Brandon Stevens also didn't practice either with his ankle injury. Now, on the Dolphins' side, A-Chain was limited, but he's probably going to play. Chosen was limited from a concussion, so it's up in the air with him. Terion Arnold has three ailments, which is their, their all-star left tackle. Knee, back, and ankle. Then another old lineman, Lynchburg, was, was hurt too. But they, they both practiced in limited additions. I mean, in limited roles. Um, with his calf and ankle. Tyreek practiced, even though we know Tyreek got the ongoing ankle thing. Uh, Xavier Howard was limited. Austin Jackson was limited, which is a third O-lineman. And then Raheem Mostert didn't practice, and Tua was limited with a thumb and a quad injury. So both teams have their share of nicked-up guys, but it's up to who executes the most, who executes the best, who does the fun fundamentals right, block, tackle, run, catch, things like that who's going to be the victor Sunday. But these are the four things that came across my desk in the last 24 hours that I wanted to share with you guys and share my insight on. I appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose here to be with me. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you've not subscribed. We are just shy of 9,000. It'd be great to hit 9,000 before the new year rolls in. And um, go over and follow more Sip the Tally too. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.